Good evening. This right here is an American supermarket store shelf filled to the brim with food. However, unbeknownst to most people, there are major problems coming down the pipe in regards to global food production. Problems that might turn these supermarket store shelves into something that looks more like this. That's because over the past several months, many different factors have all worked together to make the amount of food produced this year substantially less than normal. And it goes without saying that food which is not being produced in the year 2022 will not be on our supermarket store shelves in the year 2023. But it gets even deeper than that because the reality is that within the next year, we are potentially facing an unprecedented worldwide food crisis with, again, the vast majority of the population not even being aware of it. And if you think that might sound too alarmist, well, here was Joe Biden himself just a few months back. With regard to food shortage, yes, we did re re talk about food shortages. And, uh, and it's going to be real. The, the price of these sanctions is not just imposed upon Russia. It's imposed upon an awful lot of countries as well, including European countries and our country as well. And so in order to set the stage for you properly, let's go through the things that we know about the coming food shortages point by point, starting with the drought that America has been experiencing this summer, which has led to a huge decline in production with, in fact, the American Farm Bureau Federation suggesting that yields could be down by as much as a third compared with last year. Now, that's a third overall. However, if we dig down into some of the specific crops, we find that things like American corn is on track to produce its lowest yield since the drought year of 2012. And even more amazingly, this year's hard red winter wheat crop is expected to be the smallest since the year 1963. Think about that the smallest wheat crop since the year 1963, back when America had a population of only 182 million people. Which then brings us to the next point, the fact that in the Sacramento River Valley of California, the rice harvest is expected to be half of what it would be in a normal year. Specifically, according to the California Rice Commission, out of the 500,000 acres that are normally produced, only 250,000 acres will be harvested this year. Think about that. That's quite literally a 50% reduction in the amount of rice that will be produced this year. And the reason for this drastic drop is the lack of water that farmers have at their disposal. And to give you an example of how drastic these water cuts actually are, Mr. Kurt Richter, who is a fourth generation farmer, as well as the vice president of Richter Farms, which is again in the Sacramento River Valley over in California, he recently told a local media that, quote, he keeps a meter on the ranch to monitor how much water he uses on his crops, water that's allocated from the Federal Bureau of Reclamation. He said a normal low year for him would be a 75% water supply. This year, for his part of the valley, it was an 18% water supply. However, it's worth mentioning that not all of these water cuts are due to drought. But instead, what appears to be happening over in California is that environmentalist groups have diverted an extraordinary amount of water to protect certain species of fish that they have designated as being quote-unquote endangered. Although whether they are endangered or not is not exactly clear. What is clear, though, is that the state bureaucrats are denying water for farming and diverting it to the ocean. On a side note, I was actually in California over the last several days talking to the farmers out there about exactly this problem. And I'll go into much broader detail about it in a future episode. But for now, regardless of the cause, the main point here is that rice production in the Sacramento River Valley is down 50% year over year, which would just by itself be pretty bad. But when you couple it with other crops, it's a disaster. For instance, due to these water shortages, many crops are having to compete for an increasingly limited supply of water, leading many farmers to make, you can say, tough decisions. Here's, for instance, what one farmer over in California said regarding his tomato crop. Quote, even the river water has been cut back. Other crops are competing for that same water, other crops that have better returns. On my own farm, we've cut back from 2,000 acres of tomatoes in 2020 to 900 last year. This year, we have only 530 acres of canning tomatoes. And this particular farmer's experience, well, it mirrors what's happening in the nation as a whole, regarding tomatoes at least. In fact, according to a recent estimate from the USDA, the tomato harvest this year in 2022 will be 10.5 million tons, which sounds like a lot, until you consider that it's more than a million tons short of a normal season, which will then naturally be reflected not only in the produce section of the supermarket, but also in the price of things like pizza, spaghetti sauce, ketchup, and so on. Furthermore, if you think you can avoid these shortages by eating non-tomato-based foods, well, you can try. But consider the shortages of other crops as well. According to analysts with Rabobank, which deals heavily with the agriculture industry, here in the U.S., 
the harvest area of the latest potato crop is projected to be down 4% from last year. And just for your reference, last year's crop was already the lowest in a decade. Their analysts also found that the year-to-year -year shipments of carrots is down 45%, shipments of sweet corn is down 20%, sweet potatoes are down 13%, celery is down 11%, and according to the USDA, total peach production was down 15%.